Hola amigos de Easy Spanish, bienvenidos a un nuevo episodio. Esta vez es un episodio especial porque tenemos a un invitado. Él es Dan. Hola Dan. Hola. Él es de Canadá y tiene un canal de YouTube que se llama The New Travel. Así que, can you tell us a bit about uh, your channel and about yourself and where are you from? So I'm from Vancouver, Canada. Uh, my channel is called The New Travel and I'm trying to show you guys what Mexico is like from a foreign perspective. Um, I've been loving my time in Mexico City. Uh, I'm still working on my Spanish, which is why I'm speaking English. Uh, but with help from Easy Spanish, I've been able to learn some good Spanish uh, phrases, good Mexican phrases. And today I want to teach you guys some phrases from my country, Canada. Así que este video va a ser mayormente en inglés, pero el punto de lo que vamos a hacer hoy es que aprendamos un poco sobre el lenguaje coloquial que se usa en Canadá y un poco sobre el lenguaje coloquial en México y comparar nuestros puntos de vista culturales de acuerdo a los lugares de donde venimos. Si quieren ver los videos de Dan en su canal, eh, el link para acceder y suscribirse a su canal va a estar en la descripción del video. Eh, él va a estar aquí como unos seis meses, entonces va a hacer muchos videos sobre México, así que deben de revisarlos para que no se pierdan sus aventuras en México. Así que vamos a empezar. Número uno. A. E. H. This is a very famous Canadian phrase uh, that a lot of Americans make fun of us for. Whenever we're asking a question in Canada, it's very common to say A. For example, I will say Oh, it's really hot today, eh? Um, it's a way of asking a question. Okay, as I understand it, the equivalent in Spanish, or at least here in Mexico, would be when we say no. We say like, uh, uh, Qué lindo día, no? O está muy cool ese coche, no? Uh, maybe that's <laughs> the equivalent. Exactly. Yeah, it's a way of saying like, I want you to respond to this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Numero dos. Keep your stick on the ice. <laughs> this this is something uniquely Canadian. Juan, what do you think that means? Um, I will think about being down to earth. Uh, here you say tener los pies en la tierra. Oh, that's a good answer, <laughs> but it's a bit different. Okay. So, as you know, hockey is very popular in Canada. And if a hockey player is walking around with their, with their stick in the air, it means they're not thinking about the game, they're not focused. But if a player has the stick on the ice, they're ready for it to come to them, they're ready. So, telling someone, keep your stick on the ice, just means stay focused, st oh, okay. stay thinking. Okay. Oh. That's a nice one. We have like very weird, uh, like like ponte buzo or ponte vivo or ponte chingón, <laughs> which is a, a bad word. Numero tres. So, in Canada, there's a very popular coffee shop called Tim Hortons. It's only in Canada, and it's so popular that we have our own expression for when you go there. You say, "I'm going to get some Timmies." Timmy's. Every Canadian knows what Timmy's means. Okay. <laughs> so if you come to Canada, you have to try Timmy's. So when you go for your Timmy's, there's a special way that a lot of people like to order their coffee. They like to say, give me a double-double. Do you have any guess what double-double could mean? Um, it could be like uh, the biggest size of coffee or maybe a mocha with extra chocolate or, or the double espresso. So I know in Mexico, espresso is very popular. We like big coffees in Canada. <laughs> okay. um, double double means when you ask for two creams and two sugars. So you end up with a very sugary, very <laughs> sweet coffee. But on a cold day, it is so good. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, double double. So much like Mexico, we like to drink. We like to have some beers and some tequilas at night. Um, so let's say you and your friends are going to a bar on a Friday night. Before the bar, you want somewhere to drink because you don't want to be drinking at the bar the whole night. So what you do is you say, we're going to go to a pregame. 
Okay. Where is the pregame? And that means, like, where is the house that we're going to drink at okay. <laughs> before the game? Yeah. Claro? Si, sí, claro. Uh, that's smart. We have, like, very literal expression here, which is, like, uh, precopear, uh, which is, like, pregame. Pregame. <laughs> <laughs> Number six. This is one that's very important for you to know as Mexicans. So, Canadian winters get very cold. Which means that for the Canadians with money, a lot of them don't want to be there because it's just too cold and it's no fun in winter time. So a lot of Canadians will fly to places like Florida or Texas or Mexico. Okay. <laughs> and we have a name for that when oh, really? Canadians do that. Do you know the name? <laughs> no, I have no idea. We call them snowbirds. 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 Because there's certain birds in Canada, ah. when it gets cold, they fly south. And that's what the Canadians do. They fly south like birds and they come back when the weather's good. So when you do that, I mean, how do you use that in a sentence? If you are a snowbird, okay. how did you say it? I mean, I could say like, my rich aunt and uncle, they are such snowbirds. <laughs> okay. I never see them at Christmas because yeah. they're snowbirds. <laughs> okay. Something like that. Bueno, ahora es nuestro turno. Y le vamos a preguntar un par de cosas a Dan sobre expresiones mexicanas. Algunas de ellas ya las hemos mencionado en nuestros episodios, pero queremos saber eh, si tiene alguna idea de qué significan. Y además vamos a tratar de eh, ver qué tanto ha estado inmerso en la cultura mexicana y en las palabras más populares que decimos. La número uno es mal del puerco. Uh, like the literal translation would be like the pig's disease or yeah the pig's disease basically and it's related to to food and to eating so when we say tengo mal del puerco I have the pork's disease the pig's disease um, what do you think we, we have And maybe it means when you eat some cheap food and you get like stomach ache, you get food poisoning. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> um, yeah, it's very popular here, and we, we say it when after we've eaten. Uh, it's usually when we eat a lot. Uh, you have this uh, mood right after you've eaten that you suddenly are very sleepy. Mm. So you want to sleep and you want to do nothing uh, and you say, oh, when, when you're working and you go out to eat and then you go back to work, yeah. you don't want to work and you say, oh, I have mal del puerco, I, I don't want to do anything. And it's, uh, people say it a lot uh, these days. We, we have an expression for that too in English. Okay. We say food coma. Oh, really? <laughs> food coma. I can't move, I'm in a food coma. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's the same. Número dos, dar el avión. When you're talking to someone and someone te da el avión, gives you the airplane. It's, it's a bit hard, so... Well, airplanes are very fast and very loud. So maybe giving the airplane is when someone just flies away. <laughs> they don't say anything. They, in the middle of conversation, they just fly away. Well, it's... Uh, <laughs> it's kind of similar. I mean... They don't go, but it feels like they are not there. It's, you're not paying attention, but you are acting like you are. Número tres es estar crudo. Um, it would be, the translation would be to be raw, like meat, like raw meat. Raw meat. When you are in that condition, what do you think? is uh, what, what you're going through. It's usually in the morning of the day, when you start the day and you are raw, <laughs> it's usually in that moment. Maybe it means you have a hangover? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. it. <laughs> okay, ahora voy a preguntarle a Dan cosas que tal vez lo comprometan con los mexicanos o con los canadienses, así que vamos a ver qué pasa. You can be completely honest, it's okay. <laughs> oh. I mean, we want you to be honest. 
Uh, so the first question is, uh, are Mexicans always late? Is it true? <laughs> well, you are late today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I would say, yeah, definitely sometimes, sometimes late. Mm, I can be late sometimes too, so maybe I'm a bit Mexican, I don't know. Yeah, but <laughs> have you been um, meeting many Mexicans? Well, it's true that in my first month, I didn't make that many Mexican friends. Everyone would be friendly, but to make a friend who you're actually meeting with a lot, it, it takes more time. Uh, so I could say you are one of my first Mexican <laughs> friends. And Juan is always late. Yeah. I'm confirming this stereotype. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. I think, well, I'm kind of making ex an excuse for myself. Here living in this city is always very complicated. So we usually take the exact time because we always make many things. So if we're working or if we're, we're uh, on school and we usually... Uh, commute very long distances so we try as hard as we can to make it on time but traffic and yeah. subway and public transport is insane so especially in the Ciudad de Mexico I mean how do you get anywhere on time when the traffic is like this but it's true that most of us don't take extra time to leave because we already know it's hard but we take the exact amount of time to to go to a place so that's true question Numero dos. Um, are Mexican festive people? What do you think? Well, I will say this. Mexicans love to find any reason to make a party. And I think especially when it comes to music, uh, at least my experience in Mexico City, this is a city that really loves its music. Maybe too loud. <laughs> yeah, sometimes when I'm trying to study, it can be too loud. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people have this question before coming here. Uh, in your experience, uh, do you think Mexico City is dangerous? You know, this is a tough question for me to answer because, of course, I read the newspaper. We, we, we see stories from Mexico and a lot of the stories we hear in Canada are dangerous. So I do know that there is danger. I don't mean to say there's no danger. But my experience living in the Roma area, Condesa area, I have never felt safer. I have not had one experience that makes me feel unsafe. Um, so I think that yes, like there are problems in Mexico, like every country, but if you don't, you know, if you don't yeah. go to areas and you don't hang out with criminals, you're going to be okay. <laughs> like I'm fine, you know? Yeah. But the average Mexican has been nothing but friendly to me. And I think that the idea that Mexico is a very dangerous place, it's being fed by the media. And anyone who visits Mexico, well, you have a different experience. So that's related to my, my next question. Okay. Is it very different how you pictured Mexico before coming here and now that you're here? Wow, that's a, that's a big question. <laughs> it is very different. It is very different. Um, when I think of a city with as many people as Mexico City, you have this idea that everyone's going to be standing like this, you know, pushing against each other. But it's not like that at all. I, I don't feel, maybe it's just where I live, but I don't feel like there are as many people in the city as there are. I mean, we're sitting in a beautiful park right now and there's benches and there's trees. And that's one thing I noticed. There's a lot more space in Mexico City than I expected. Um, in terms of safety and friendliness, yeah, I mean, as you can see, I don't speak that much Spanish. <laughs> so I was worried if I'd be able to survive in Mexico City, but okay. even when I'm at, let's say I'm at a coffee shop and the person I'm speaking to can't understand me, a complete stranger will come up and help. Okay. I've had that experience a few times. So I think that Mexicans are very welcoming and they're, they're quick, to, quick to help someone like me when they can. Okay. Yeah. Okay, the next question. What has been the biggest cultural shock? The biggest cultural shock. Okay. I think my cultural shock has to be Mexican food. Um, before I came to Mexico, I had a very basic idea of what the food would be like. You know, you hear about Tex-Mex, like okay. American and Canadian Mexican food. It's not Mexican food. So when we think about Mexican food, we think about tacos, 
burritos. You do not even have that many burritos in Mexico. Yeah, not. Nah. Uh, and we think about, you know, quesadilla. The food in Mexico has... It actually makes me angry that there are so many, like, great dishes that I didn't get to try before I came to Mexico. <laughs> because we just think of Mexico as little snack foods. But in reality, like... There's all of this depth and all this culture yeah. coming from different regions and what? it's overwhelming sometimes. Like, what do I even order? I don't know. <laughs> I need Mexican friends to help me. Okay. <laughs> so if you want to recommend dishes to Dan, you can also uh, write them on the comments and places to go to eat here in Mexico City. There's, there's, that's very appreciated. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And the, the uh, bonus question is about, yeah. about food. It's just like... A big uh, discussion between Mexicans, and we want to <laughs> to put fire on it. Okay. <laughs> ¿Comes quesadillas con queso o sin queso? Do you eat quesadillas with cheese or without cheese? Uh, well, of course you have to have cheese. <laughs> quesadilla. Okay. Anyone who has quesadilla without cheese is as local. <laughs> so this is uh, it for today. Thank you very much for being with us. It was very uh, um, a funny video and very. We learned a lot. I hope you, you did as well. I had a great time. I learn, I learn a lot every time I watch Easy Spanish. <laughs> so he's going to be here for quite a while. So make sure to subscribe to his channel. The information is going to be on the description box. And he also has many other videos uh, around the world. You have been to other places for sure. Yeah, I've lived in Europe. I've lived in Asia. I've been very lucky to travel a lot. And I'm not joking about this. Mexico, you have... <laughs> such a beautiful country and I can't wait to explore more of it. Thank you very much. Nos vemos eh, pronto. Ah, muchas gracias. Adiós. Hasta luego. Chao. Muchas gracias por ver este video. Denle like, no se olviden y suscríbanse a nuestro canal con el link que está en la caja de descripciones. También si quieren obtener la transcripción de este episodio y ejercicios sobre los temas que vemos en nuestros episodios, tanto en Super Easy Spanish como en nuestros street interviews, no duden de convertirse en supporters de Easy Spanish en Patreon. Pueden hacerlo a través del link que está en la caja de descripciones y nos ayudan a que nuestro proyecto cada vez sea mejor y siga creciendo. Gracias y nos vemos hasta la próxima. Hola YouTube, <laughs> viva México. <laughs> Okay, next one. So, after you get your Timmy's... Uh, no, wait, 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 I need to do that again. Okay, so... Yo soy un chilango. Um, have you heard of it? Chilango? Um, no. Yo no sé. <laughs>